from around the globe. It's theCUBE, with digital coverage of Dell Technologies World. Digital experience, brought to you by Dell Technologies. Welcome to theCUBE's coverage of Dell Technologies World 2020, the digital experience this year. I'm Lisa Martin, pleased to be joined by two CUBE alumni from Dell EMC. Please welcome Joe Caradonna, the VP of Cloud Stores DTO. Joe, good to see you again, even though quite socially distanced. Yeah, thank you, it's great to be here. And Devin Reed is also joining us, the Senior Director of Product Management. Devin, how are you? I'm good, how are you? Nice to have, good. Nice, to, nice to be here, thank you. Nice to be chatting with you guys, although very, very socially distanced, following rules. It's uh wouldn't be a Dell Technologies world without having you guys on theCUBE, so we appreciate you joining us. So let's dig in. Some of the, so much has happened in the world since we last spoke with you, but one of the things that happened last year, uh, around a year ago, was the Dell On Demand program was launched, and now here we are nearly a year later when Michael Dell was just talking about, hey, Dell's plan is to go and deliver everything as a service. We've heard some of your competitors kind of going the same route, some kind of spurned by COVID. Talk to us, Devin, we'll start with you, about what this direction, this shift to as a service means and what it means specifically for storage. Yeah, certainly. So first and foremost, um, what we talked about last year with respect to on-demand, Dell Technologies on-demand, We've had great success with that program. But before I get into uh, what we're doing with as a service, I really want to talk about why we're doing the as a service. And when we talk to customers and partners, and when we look at um, you know, the trends in the market, what we're seeing is that customers are more and more wanting to consume uh, technology infrastructure as a service in an OPEX manner. And um, analysts are revising those estimates up almost daily. And what we're seeing is uh, what, one of the things that's driving that is actually why we're here in this, uh, in this remote session as opposed to being in, in Vegas doing this. And it's really the, the global, global uncertainty around the, the pandemic. So it's driving the need to free up cash and, and consume these infrastructure more as a service. Now, as Michael said, yeah, yeah as Michael said, um, we have the broadest uh, set of infrastructure offerings in the market and we're, we're number one in, in most categories. And we're in the process of building out an offer structure that cuts across all of the different infrastructure components. Um, but to get real specific on what we're doing with uh, storage as a service, we are in the process of building out the first true storage or as a service offering for our infrastructure, starting with storage. It'll be a private preview as a Q4 by the end of this fiscal year and uh, generally available in the first half of next year. And what we're doing is taking the infrastructure, the, the Dell Technologies storage, and we're, we're flipping the, the business model, as opposed to buying it outright, the customers um, actually just uh, consume it as a service. So they have a very simple consumption model where they just pick their outcome, they pick their, their storage service, they pick their performance, they pick their capacity, and we deliver that service to their on-premise site. Let me unpack outcomes, because I saw that in some of the the information online, outcome driven. What do you mean by that? And can you give us some examples of those outcomes that customers are looking to achieve? Yeah, so in today's world, um, the way people mostly consume infrastructure is, or at least storage, is that they say, I need a storage product. And what the customers do is they work with our sales representatives and say, I need a XYZ product. Maybe it's a power store, and I need this much capacity, I can tweak all of the components, I can pick the number of drives, the type of drives there are, and that's really from a product perspective. And what we're doing with the as a service is we're trying to flip the model and really drive to what the business outcome is. So the business outcome here is really, I need block storage, I need this performance level, 
I need this much capacity. And then we basically ship the infrastructure we think that better suits those outcomes, right? And we're, we're making changes across our entire infrastructure value chain to really deliver these service. Uh, so we try to deliver these uh, much quicker to the customer. Uh, we actually manage the infrastructure. So it enables customers to spend less time managing their infrastructure and more time actually operating the service, you know, paying attention to their business out. Got it. And that's what every customer wants more of is more time to actually deliver those business outcomes and make those course corrections as they need to. Joe, let's talk to you for a, a bit. Let's talk what's going on with cloud. Um, in the last you know, time we saw you, a lot of change as we talked about, but give us a, a picture of Dell's cloud strategy from what you guys are doing on-prem to what you are doing with cloud partners. What does this multi-pronged cloud strategy actually mean? Yeah, sure. I mean, our customers want hybrid cloud solutions and we believe that to be the model going forward. And uh, so actually what we're doing is, you know, if you think about it, we're taking the best of public cloud and, and bringing it on-prem. Uh, and we're also taking the, the best of on-prem and bringing it to the, to the public cloud. So, you know, Devin just talked to you about, you know, how we're bringing that public cloud operation model to, you know, to the data center. Uh, but what we've also done is bring our, our storage arrays to the cloud as a, as a service. And we've done that with, you know, with PowerStore, we've done that with PowerMax, and we've done that with PowerScale. Uh, and in the case of PowerScale for Google Cloud, I mean, you get the same performance and capacity scale out in the cloud as you do as you do on prem, and the systems interoperate between on prem and cloud, so it makes it easy for you know fluid data mobility across these environments. And for the first time, it enables our customers to you know get their data to the cloud in a way that they can bring their high performance uh, file workloads uh, to the cloud. So talk to me a little bit about, uh, you, you mentioned PowerScale for Google Cloud Service. Is that a, a Dell hardware-based solution? How does that work? Yeah, the adoption's been great. I mean, we launched uh, back in May, uh, and since then we brought on customers in oil and gas and e-commerce and uh, in, in health, uh, health as well. And, you know, we're growing out the regions. Um, you know, we're, we're going to be announcing a new region in North America soon. Uh, and we're going to be building out an APJ and EMEA as well. So uh, the customer response has been fantastic. Uh, looking forward to, to, to growing it up. Excellent. Devin, back to you. Let's talk about some of the things that are going on with uh, PowerProtect DD. Some new cloud services there too. Can you unpack that for us? So uh, Joe was talking about how we were taking our, our storage systems and putting them in the cloud. So I'll just back up and, and kind of introduce real quickly or reintroduce uh, our Dell Technologies uh, cloud storage services. And that's really, we have our primary storage systems from Unity XT to PowerStore to PowerScale uh, to ECS. And that's um, housed in a co-locations facility right next to uh, hyperscalers. And that, that enables us uh, to provide a fully managed service uh, offering to our customers um, to a multi-cloud. Um, so what we're doing is we're extending the Dell Technologies cloud storage services uh, to include PowerProtect DD. So we're bringing PowerProtect DD into this managed services uh, offering so customers can use it for uh, cloud uh, long-term retention, backup, archiving, and direct backup from a multi-cloud environment. So extending what we've already done with the Dell Technologies Cloud Storage Services. So is that almost kind of like a cloud-based data protection solution for those workloads that are running in the cloud, VMs, SaaS applications, physical servers, file data, things like that? Yeah, there's several use cases. So uh, you could have a primary block storage system uh, on your premises. And you could actually be providing direct backup into the cloud. You could have uh, backups that you have on premise that you could be then replicating with uh, PowerProtect data, data domain replication to cloud. And you could also have data in AWS or Azure or Google that you could be backing up directly to the PowerProtect data domain uh, 
into this service. So there's multiple use cases. Got it. All right, um, Joe. Let's talk about some of the of the the extensions of cloud. You guys have both been talking about the last few minutes. One mm -hmm. of the recent announcements was about PowerMax being cloud enabled, and that's a big deal to cloudify something like that. Help us understand yep. the the nature of that, the impetus, and what that means now, and what customers are able to actually use today. Yeah, sure. I mean, we've launched uh, PowerMax as a cloud service about a year and a half ago with our, our partner faction. Um, and that's for those customers that want that tier zero enterprise grade data capabilities in the cloud, uh, and not just a cloud, it also offers multi-cloud capabilities uh, for both file uh, and block. Um, now, in addition, at Dell Tech World, you know, we've, we're launching uh, additional cloud mobility capabilities for PowerMax, where let's say you have a PowerMax on-prem, you could actually do snapshot shipping to a, an object repository. And that could be you know, in, in AWS, uh, that could be in Azure, or it could be locally you know, to our local uh, ECS object store. Um, in addition, in the case of Amazon, we go a step further, uh, where if you do snapshot shipping into Amazon S3, uh, you can then rehydrate those snapshots uh, directly into EBS. Uh, and that way you can do processing on that data in the cloud as well. Give me a, an idea, Joe, of the last few months or so, what some of your customer conversations have been like. I know you're normally in front of customers all the time. Dell Tech World is a great example. I think last year there was about 14,000 folks there. It's huge. Yeah. And we're all so used to that three-dimensional engagement. Ch more challenging to do remotely, but talk to me about some of the customer conversations that you've had and how they've helped influence some of the recent announcements. Yeah, sure. You, you know, customers. It might sound a little cliche, but um, cloud is a journey. It's a journey for our customers. It's a journey for us too, as we build our capabilities to best serve them. Um, but their, their questions are, I want to take advantage of that elastic compute in the cloud. Um, but you know, maybe the data storage doesn't, doesn't, uh, doesn't keep up with it. Um, in the case of when we go to PowerScale for Google, the reason why we brought that platform to the cloud is because you can get hundreds of, of gigabytes per second of throughput through that. And for our customers that are doing things like processing genomic uh, sequencing data, uh, they, need, they need that level of throughput. Um, and they want to move those workloads uh, into the cloud. Uh, the compute is there, but the storage systems to keep up with it, we're not. Um, so by us bringing a solution like this to the cloud, now, now they, can, they can do that. Um, so we see that with PowerScale, we see a lot of that with file in the cloud because the file services in the cloud uh, aren't as mature as some of the other ones, like with block and, and object. Um, so we're helping filling some of those gaps and getting them to those those higher performance tiers. And as I was mentioning with things like, like PowerMax and PowerStore, it's extending their on-prem presence uh, into the public cloud. Uh, so they can start to you know, make decisions not based on uh, capability, but more based on you know, their requirements for uh, where, they wanna, where they wanna run their workloads. And let's switch gears to talking about partners now. I, Dell has a huge partner ecosystem. Uh, we always talk with those folks on the Cube as well every year. Devin, from a product management perspective, tell me about some of the things that are interesting to partners and what the advantages are for partners with this new with this shift in what how, how Dell is going to be delivering from PCs to storage to HCI, for example. Yeah, exactly. So um, Joe mentioned that it's really a journey. And Joe talked a lot about how um, customers aren't, you know, maybe not satisfied completely going to a hyperscaler or to a complete uh, public cloud. And what we're hearing is there's a lot of customers that are actually wanting the cloud-like experience, but wanting it on-prem. And we're hearing from our partners almost on a daily basis. I have a lot of partner and customer conversations where they want to they want to be involved in, in delivering this as a service uh, to their customers. And they want to make a relationship, drive that value, and in some cases even provide the services for them. Uh, and and that's what we're we're looking to do as the the largest infrastructure provider with the the broadest base of partnership. 
we have an advantage there. Is there any specific partner certification programs that partners can get into to help start rolling this out? At this point, we are we are uh, trying to build it, but at this point, we we have nothing to announce here. But uh, that's something that we're actively working on, and uh, stay tuned for that. I imagine there will be a lot of virtual conversations at the digital yeah. Dell Tech World this year between the partner community when all of these things are announced, and you get those brains collectively together, although obviously virtually, to start iterating on ideas and developing things that might be great to programmatize down the road. Right. And Joe, last question for you, second to last question actually, is <laughs> this, this year, as we talked about a number of times, everyone's remote, everyone's virtual. It's challenging to, to get that level of engagement. We're all so used to being in person and all right. of the hallway conversations even that you have when you're walking around the, the massive show floor, for example. What can participants and attendees expect from your perspective this year at Dell Technologies World? Will they be able to get the education and that engagement that Dell really wants to deliver? Yeah, well, clearly we we had to scale things back, right? There's just no way no way around that. Uh, but we have a lot of sessions that were designed to you know inform them of the new capabilities we've been building out, and not just for cloud, but across the across the portfolio. Um, so I hope they get it. They get a lot out of that. Uh, we have some interactive uh, sessions in there as well for some interactive Q and A. And you're right. I mean, a challenge for us is connecting with the customer in this virtual reality. Um, you know, we're we're all at home, right? Uh, the customers are at home. Um, so we've been we've been on Zoom like never before, uh, reaching out to customers. You know, to better understand where they want to go, uh, what their challenges are, and and how we can help them. So I would say we are connecting. It's it's a little different and requires a little more effort on everyone's part. Uh, we just can't all do it in the same day anymore. It's just a little more spread out. Well, then it kind of you know shows the opportunity to consume things on demand. And as consumers, we sort of have this expectation that we can get anything we want on demand. But you mentioned, Joe, I said I had second to last question. This is the last one. Because you mentioned everybody's at home. You have to tell us about that fantastic guitar behind you. What's the story? Every guitar has a story. Um, uh, I'll just say for for today. Look at this is my my tribute to, to Eddie Van Halen. You know we're gonna uh, we're gonna miss him for sure. And I'll have the audience know I did ask Joe to play us out. He declined, but I'm gonna hold him to that for next time because we're not sure when we're gonna get to see you guys in person again. Joe and Devin, thank you so much for joining me on the program today. It's been great talking to you. Lots of things coming, lots of iterations, lots of influence from the customers, influence from COVID, and we're excited to see what is to come. Thanks for your time. Thank, Thank you so much. Lee. For my guests, Joe Caradonna and Devin Reed, I'm Lisa Martin. You're watching theCUBE's coverage of Dell Technologies World 2020, the digital experience. <laughs>